Hey everyone, Rayo here and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going over a very important PVM ability called Prayer Flicking by explaining how it works in relation to ticks, knowing when to prayer flick, and going over a keybind recommendation. Before we get started, if you enjoy this video and want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. But without further ado, let's get into it. Prayer Flicking is such an important skill to have with RuneScape PVM. It could very well be the difference between you learning harder bosses or at the very least keeping you from doing them consistently and or reliably. Fret not, Prayer Flicking is not difficult to understand but to be very honest it is not the easiest thing to get used to as it increases your inputs per minute by quite a lot. That being said, it is very worth learning due to save supplies costs as well as improving your DPM in the form of using more DPS oriented familiars, pocket slot items, and even saved adrenaline from not consuming hard foods. Now let's go over some of the key factors to understand with prayer flicking, and then you can decide if this is something you'd like to incorporate into your gameplay. Let's start this off with keybinds. I'm not going to go incredibly in depth with this topic as it's a very big topic in its own right, but it is important to know that all of your high usage and high priority keybinds should be easily accessible, as well as within reach so you don't have to lift your hand from the keyboard. Personally, I have my basics keybound from A through F and W through R for the most part. There's some thresholds depending on the style, but you get the gist. Right below this, I have my prayers bound from Z to V. This allows me to switch prayers easily without needing to move my hand all across the keyboard. If you've played RuneScape for any length of time, you know of the tick system. And if you haven't heard of this before, then chances are you've noticed it in your gameplay. Do you notice how your character sort of slides around when they run, or how your clicks and abilities don't fire off the moment you trigger that command? That's because of in-game ticks. If you aren't aware, game ticks are sort of like a server refresh rate. The shorter the time it takes to refresh, the sooner your inputs go through. Some games like FPS style shooters have very short ticks, which allows for almost immediate feedback. RuneScape's tick rate, on the other hand, is very slow compared to most modern games, which comes in at 6 tenths of a second. Well, okay dude, that's cool, but how is this important to me? Well, all that being said, having a decent understanding of how these ticks work will help you understand why your boss fights turn out the way that they do. I can tell you there are more than a handful of times I've eaten food, prayed correctly, or used a defensive ability, but Jamflex servers killed me. Well, yes and no. Yes, the servers are a part of that equation, but no, it's not Jagex's fault. It was mine. And it was due to not using my abilities and prayers in the correct tick. Weapons, auto attacks, abilities, boss auto attacks, literally everything in RuneScape runs on this system, and understanding how to take advantage of it is the key. Whenever you input a command, it won't immediately register in that tick but it will instead cue it as an input for the following tick. I.e., if I press my keybind for the deflect magic curse in tick number one, it will become active on tick number two. All of that was a very lengthy explanation, I know, but trust me this is important for this guide and literally everything else in RuneScape. The last point to mention here is knowing when you need to flick your prayer. When you're fighting a boss, sometimes the boss will miss, which means you could have stayed on soul split for more healing. But how do you know whether or not you actually have to switch your prayers? If you are able to pay attention to an encounter, you will notice that if an attack hits, the attack animation will complete, then you'll receive the hit splat. This varies from boss to boss, but that's essentially always the case. However, when the boss misses, indicated by a zero on your character, this hit splat will appear much sooner than a hit splat that has actually damaged you. I don't know the exact timing of this, I can just say from personal experience that it's about one or two ticks prior to the attack animation touching your character. This is much easier to notice when you're fighting a boss at a distance such as Karapak. In the footage on screen, you'll notice that in phase 4, when a green projectile does damage to my character, it will touch my character before the hit splat appears. But when it misses, I'll see the zero hit splat when the projectile is about halfway between Karapak and my character. This is an important idea to note, as changing to a protection prayer means you will not have any healing from soul split. So if you don't actually have to change to a protected prayer, you're better off increasing your healing instead. To give an explanation as to why this is the case, or at least why I believe this is the case, prior to evolution of combat, damage was calculated at the start of an attack animation for players and NPCs. This is still the case in old school RuneScape, if you play that version of RuneScape. But when they updated the combat system in RuneScape 3, the damage is now calculated when it appears as a hit splat as opposed to when the attack is initiated. This allows for more reactive gameplay for a combat system like RuneScape 3's. I can't explain why exactly the missed hit splats appear earlier, but I have a hunch it has to do with moving from the old combat system. If anyone has a more technical or accurate reason for this, please comment and let me know because I'm very curious. Lastly, how do you prayer flick? 
This part will take some getting used to if you are not accustomed to prayer flicking at all. But as I mentioned earlier, this is such a helpful skill to have with RS3 PVM as it is the difference between a yak full of food kills and no food kills. Continuing on from the previous sections in this guide, you want to get a feel for the boss's attack animations for the boss you're currently fighting, and getting a feel for when the hit splat actually appears on your character. If you have curses, you essentially want to use soul split as your default prayer, and switch to the protection prayers as needed. As we mentioned in the previous section, when the projectile or attack is about to land on your character, you will want to swap to the correct protection prayer a tick before it happens then swap back to soul split to heal back up and manage your HP. The good thing about runescape is that the tick system is consistent and the timing of a boss's auto attacks are predictable. So once you have the timing of an attack, you just need to recognize which prayer to switch to. There are exceptions of course, specifically when a boss can attack with all three styles. The melee auto attack typically appears sooner since there's no gap between you and your target. This is the case with Masuda from Elite Dungeons 1 as well as Raksha but their ranged and mage auto attacks have more of a delay due to the distance the projectile has to travel. The ideal spot to practice prayer flicking is the Arch Glacier from the Elder God Wars dungeon. If you are just getting started with prayer flicking and you've never fought the Arch Glacier, go into the normal mode version of this fight with only the flurry special attack option toggled. This will cause the Arch Glacier to swap between mage attacks and ranged attacks. Once you get to a point where you can do hard mode, this will challenge you to not only complete a more difficult version of the 5 mechanic normal mode fight, but it will also add melee as a possible attack style during the flurry special mechanic. If you're feeling confident, take this to some other bosses like Vindicta or Hellweir from God Wars Dungeon 2, or maybe even Araxer or Raksha. That's all I have for you today guys. I really hope you enjoyed this quick startup guide to prayer flicking. I know that this was something very challenging for me to pick up, but from my personal experience, this is what allowed me to comfortably complete harder content like Raksha, Elite Dungeons, Care Pack, and nowadays, it feels like second nature. I've gotten so accustomed to it that I don't even remember when I couldn't prayer flick, and it makes learning new content much less daunting than it was in the past. What's your experience with prayer flicking? Let me know if you have any further questions by commenting down below, or if you'd like to take the conversation off of YouTube, you can join my Discord channel and join my community. We have plenty of awesome, experienced PVMers who love to share their knowledge and experience with others. You can always tune into my streams as well. The link to my Twitch is in the video description, along with some other playlist links for my Maxing Melee and Reckless Ranger series. Lastly, drop a like if you enjoyed this video. This helps expose my content to new people, and I'd greatly appreciate the support. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Rayo, and I'll see you in my next video. Take care.